Friends, welcome back to our homestead. I'm a little irritated today because a couple of days ago, I was completely devastated. Something happened to us here on the homestead that hasn't happened since we moved in over six and a half years ago. Now, when I moved in, I knew this was going to be a problem. So I did a preventative measure to try and alleviate that problem. And it has worked for six and a half years, but it finally failed. Let me show you what that is. That is a gopher or mole trail in my garden. So if you can see right here, we've got one running right through where we are supposed to plant our sweet potatoes this week. So I'm really surprised that they got in here after this long period of time. Let me show you the original barrier that we built to try to keep out moles, voles, and gophers. Well, here it is. This is galvanized half inch hardware cloth. It is buried two feet in the ground and it is bent out away from the garden. It also obviously sticks up about 10 inches above the ground around the entire garden. So it still goes in front of the gates, but it is bent down flush with the ground, obviously, so we can get in and out of the garden. Now, before I did this, I had read how effective it was, and it has been extremely effective for a long period of time. But that kind of wire can and will rust over time, and I guess it has. Now, I had noticed holes actually in the floor of this chicken coop out here. I think the chickens have kind of scared them away because that those chickens will eat whatever comes up out of that hole. But I've noticed some big mounds out here, and that's a gopher. So when you have a huge mound, usually 12 to 20 inches in diameter, that's a gopher, and there are very few of them. If you have a mole, they will leave very smaller mounds that are kind of cone-shaped, and there are much more of them. So a vole is gonna leave a trail that's really shallow and any rain is gonna expose all of those little um, ditches, I guess you could say, and you could see them. All of them are gonna devastate your lawn, but only some of them are going to devastate the vegetables in your garden. The other day I noticed next to my potatoes, just trails everywhere. Now, I was trying to determine whether they are gophers or moles. I hope they are moles. Even though moles will eat your earthworms, they are carnivorous. They are insectivores. So I don't have to worry about them eating my sweet potatoes, eating the roots of all my plants, and the tubers, obviously, on my beautiful potatoes. But if this is a gopher, then I am in serious trouble because they are herbivores, and gophers will take your potatoes. They'll basically, if it's in the path of their underground tunnel, They'll take it and they'll start pulling the entire plant underground and eat the entire thing. I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera, but this right here is a trail underneath my weed barrier and the center plastic right here. And I can just push it right down. And this was not here yesterday. So luckily I don't see any activity in these raised beds that I've made. And if you saw us build our original raised beds in our greenhouse, you'll know that I, in the bottom of each raised bed, I did put hardware cloth because that is not surrounded by a barrier on the outside. And I knew that gophers or moles would get up through and in, into those beds from the surrounding area. So that's how I dealt with them. Now in this spot right here, there are trails everywhere and luckily, I don't see any rice or sorghum that has died from being eaten, although the roots probably aren't that big yet because they're just little seedlings. So I don't think a uh, gopher is going to eat those. They're going after big stuff, right? Like those potato plants. I've dealt with trails like this outside of the garden for a very long period of time. You can see one of the holes here in the bed that's outside of the main garden. This bed is not protected on the edges. So we've got one here and we've got one right there and i think there's another one over here so that's why i've used these protective cages made of stainless steel wire in this area here and i did mention these in a video that i did a while ago and i'll put a link to them in the description below i put these around all 
of my new fruit trees or bushes that I'm planting on the property. And now I've started to use them for things like this as well. So let's talk about eradication or prevention of moles, voles, and gophers. Firstly, I thought they were moles, and I hope I'm correct because, like I said, moles are carnivorous and they're not going to eat my vegetables. So I went with this right here, which is a mole bait. It is shaped like a worm and it is poison. So what you do is you find the mole trail and you dig down, you figure out where they're at, and you put one of these down in there. Behind me, this is supposed to be planted with southern peas right now, but I have sticks sticking out of the ground everywhere where I did put a bait under the ground. Now, I may have been impatient and did not wait long enough for them to possibly work. I just started grabbing everything else that I could to try to mitigate the problem out here. And the second thing I've got was a sonic vibration producer. So you could hear that and I can feel that. The, the vibration sound is pretty loud and the vibration is uh, not super strong, but it's annoying. And I place these around the garden where I have my root vegetables mostly, around the potatoes, where the sweet potatoes will be because I want to drive them out of there, and where I have beets. So I'm fairly sure that these are doing better work than these because I see fresh trails underneath the weed barrier fabric in the garden. I don't see them in here. That's where these are. But I think maybe that these didn't work, they didn't eat them, and they are being driven away by these. Now I've read a lot about using castor oil and vinegar to pour in the holes and pour around the holes and that starts to irritate them and they don't like the smell and they kind of stay away from that area. I haven't tried that so I'm not sure if it works but I wanted to pass that along to you. So the last thing I tried was a gopher trap because I didn't know if they were gophers or moles. This can work for moles but it's a little big for their trails. So if it's a gopher you want to find one of those big mounds and dig down and put this in the hole right before that big mound. Now it's important to note that voles will leave about an inch to an inch and a half wide diameter hole very near the surface. A mole is a little bit bigger. It'll leave a two inch, give or take, inch and a half to two inch trail a little deeper, about six inches. And then gophers actually do go deeper, about 12 to 18 inches, and their hole is bigger. It is about two and a half inches wide. So this trap right here is perfect for getting inside there. This did fit in what I had, so again, I just don't know what it is. So this is a gopher trap. It's a Victor 610. It's a very famous trap. And it's been around for a long time. What you do is you push on the center and open up the pinchers and you get this small bar with these prongs on it hooked under the front of the big bar there. And then we're gonna put this back paddle or this trigger over the end of it like that then the gopher comes through here and they're fairly long probably about six inches long when the gopher comes through here and bumps into this it snaps and these these sharpened tines will go into it and kill it or trap it Unfortunately, I have not found anything that's been caught in this so far. I think these might be my best bet. I have a friend who just lives down the road and he says he uses these with what he thinks is good effect because they seem to kind of leave the area that they are in. Unfortunately, all these things are cheap plastic and they are made you know where and they don't last very long at all. And unfortunately, they can get a little expensive. I'll put a link in the description below for these. They're okay, they're not the best, but I'll leave that link for you anyway. So again, you can prevent them from getting in by putting up a human barrier, some sort of metal barrier, although after a few years, it may fail. Second, you can try to kill them. Third, you can ward them off with a sonic noise or some sort of uh, smell that they don't care for. And then the last way is killing off their food source. So if you have a mole, that means killing off all the bugs underneath the soil, the grubs, the worms, and everything like that. That's not an option. Or if it's a vole or a gopher, that means just not planting anything in your garden that doesn't have some sort of cage around it. And that's not an option either. So hopefully that information was helpful. You can try your best and work at it and work at it and work at it. And sometimes it's gonna fail out here on the homestead. You just have to keep moving forward. That buried fencing six and a half years ago was a lot of work, uh, but hey, 
it work for a long period of time. I would recommend it. And luckily where I put those other cages, the Volkings, around my blueberry bushes or around the grapes or around other fruit trees and things like that, it has worked so far. I'll keep you guys updated. I don't see any potatoes yet being pulled under the ground and eaten, so that's a good sign that it's a mole and not a gopher. But I hope that nothing else discovers the hole in my barrier out there. No gophers and no voles, because if that happens, this whole garden would be devastated. All right, have a beautiful blessed day and check out this video right here, which is our full guide on how to plant strawberries. We'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.